What's up? It's your boy Rampage Jackson. I'm here with the best co-host, Bear DeGidio. We're here. We got another amazing guest, but Rampage, before we go into this guest, we are having the biggest sale of the year, jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide, the best-selling chain stacks, our best-selling iced out chains, sweat proof, custom class, durable, made to be worn every day, and styles for everybody from bracelets to chains. Make sure you guys go check out jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide right now. And don't forget, if you're looking for all the limited edition clothing, you can go to jacksonclub.com. You can use promo code YT15 for 15% off. And you can catch the shorts that we've been training in, the jackets, the eyewear, everything that the guests have been wearing. We appreciate everybody's support. Before we jump right into this podcast with this amazing guest, we just want to say thank you for everything you guys have been doing. Leave comments and make sure you guys tag us on Instagram if you've been picking up some pieces. Mungangu. Francis Mungangu. Oh. He's making money you. Francis oh. Mungangu. <laughs> Mungangu? <laughs> I was laughing, I was laughing so hard at these Hey, shoes. you know what? I- I'm bringing us in on this one since you guys can't figure out how to say Dorino or Nganyu. Nganyu. Mungangu. <laughs> Mungangu. <laughs> we got the one and only Gilbert Burns here. We got Rampage Jackson. He made his flight. He showed up on time. It's phenomenal. It's good to have you back. The last episode we had T. Woodley on here. He was wild and out. T. Hey, T. Woodley, he's wild. No, he's one of a kind. But today we have a very special guest, the one and only Rampage. I've been trying to get him on the podcast for like three months. He said, no, wait till your subscribers are up. He said, wait till you have some better guests. He said, I'm not coming on after Tito Ortiz. I said, why, dude? Why you got to play Tito like that? And he said, when you're ready, call me. And I finally called him. He didn't answer. And then uh, he said, talk to my assistant. His assistant sent me an email. Then they sent me a WhatsApp, and now he's here. Man, he's a, he a busy man. He's a future champion. Future champion. Man, you're going you're gonna to get that belt. You're gonna Soon, get my brother. Soon, yeah. man. We, we, yeah, we're so close. This year, uh, I got those two wins real quick in, in January in Brazil, in Rio. Got to finish. Then I got the fight with Miles down in Miami. And there was a quick turnaround. UFC asked to get the short notice against Bilal Mohammed. First round, for five rounds, first round, I blow up my shoulder. Mm-hmm. Still four, like four more rounds with a messed up shoulder. But now, now shoulder's good. Back on it. Got a fight confirmation. Uh, March 9 in Miami, UFC 299. And we're back on the horse to get this belt. Can you say who your opponent is? Yeah, Jack Della Madalena. He's an Australian dude, six and no one in UFC. Oh, wow. Number 11 now in the ranking. Tough, tough dude, boxer. Oh, he's a boxer? Yeah. Uh, we know how that fight going to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's number four ranked in the welterweight division, and Gilbert also has had some of the most, I would say, uh, impressive career wins of all time in jiu-jitsu. He's a champion in no gi and gi. He's one of the best on the floor, and he's one of the best in the division. It's an honor to have you here, joking aside. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time and blessing us. This is going to be an exciting uh, communication, I would say, the way Rampage is. <laughs> my, gonna... my, my pleasure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, he's the only one that agrees with me how I say Francis' last name. We say it correctly. <laughs> how do you say it, Gilbert? How do you say it? <laughs> <laughs> Nganu. How do you say it? <laughs> I, I saw the video he's saying. I, I learned from Rampage. It was m- Mungango. <laughs> <laughs> That's the correct way to say it. Hey, if, if Francis was here, to be honest, would you say it like that? I, I tried on him before. Yeah, yeah he you didn't trained, like it. He didn't like yeah, it? No. He didn't like it when you said the name like that? No, no, when we trained it. Oh, he didn't like the training? No. Oh, oh he didn't like you? You were tapping that him was, out? That was, that was a long time ago. I still got to wow. count that as a week because it was a long time ago. Yeah. That was... Uh, we still had the Black Zilla, so that's been what maybe five years ago, maybe. Wow. And we grapple hard and I get his arm and he didn't tap, he popped his arm. I was so afraid. Wow. I say, Oh my god, now this guy gonna kill me now. But he was cool he about was- it. So but yeah, so we trained before, but I don't wanna fight that guy. No, no way. No. He's twice your size. He's no. twice my size. I don't wanna fight these guys. Twice your size in what? Height? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but but you mentioned <laughs> Hey, yo. What, he's laughing, what? not me. I just was wondering. Hey, so but you mentioned it though. You said you train at the Black Zillions. Yeah, we should train there. Yeah. yeah are you a Black Zillion? Cuz I didn't know you was black till you grew your hair out. What's up with that, bro? What's up with your hair, dude, bro? I'm black. <laughs> I didn't I, Bro, I had no idea you was black. As soon as you grew your hair out like, that nigga black from Brazil. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but but some people in Brazil don't be black though. No, yeah, Brazil is all mixed. Yeah. Yeah. Are you 100 percent Brazilian? Yeah, 100. Yeah. percent Where's the fro come from? 
from <laughs> my 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 bro. <laughs> why are you laughing? That, that the guy. <laughs> Where did the fro come from, and why did the fro come from? My my grandma is African. She she came all the way from from Africa, I think Nigeria. But yeah, that's where the hair came from. That's where the afro came from. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. thank you. You're gonna dread it or thank cornrow? I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah? cornrow to the fight. You know? Wow. But it, why? Why are you gonna cornrow? It don't get in your face though. If it, <laughs> here it gets on my face. Oh, uh, if, if it gets, if it gets on my oh, face, yeah, yeah. so I gotta. You be look like Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> You listen to Michael Jackson? You listen to Michael Jackson? I do. Yeah, I do. That's why you that's I why you go. Would you ever get a, a Jerry Carroll like Michael Jackson used to get? No. <laughs> no. No way. Yeah, you could. You should do it for one fight. Yeah. Come out in a red jacket. Take it from around. Be like yeah, Anderson yeah. Silva back in the Pride days. That's right. That's right. You remember, remember that? that? I do remember. Yeah. I used to love that he used to come out like Michael Jackson. You I like you that. Jerry and he was your dancing. Yeah. I, can't, I cannot dance like that. Oh, you can't dance like he that. He was all dancing like he, he was, was good. Oh, legit. the way you move your shoulders, I yeah. think you have something. No, but he was legit dancing. Like, like how? No, Anderson, whoa. Like, whoa. man, he can dance like Michael Jackson. Like Michael Anderson? Jackson, yeah. yes. You never saw that fight? No, I've you seen it, but that's not one. like Michael Jackson. No, no, it is. The way he was dancing, yeah, he can dance. He can dance <laughs> yeah. like Michael Jackson. All right, so you guys are very excited about Anderson Silva dancing. That's good to know. Look at this guy. No, nah, I just wondered. <laughs> We're, what I want to know is, and I want to kick it off with this. You jump back then against Bella Muhammad uh, Bilal. You jump back then with him after two wins. It was it was very yeah. quick, and uh, I feel like you know that's three times in six months, five, five months. months. Yeah, it's and it's and it's back to back, and you're an elite athlete, you're an elite fighter, but there's only so much your body could go through. Yeah, is it the time delay uh, of not taking enough time that hurt you? Was it him that hurt you? Like, explain to me how did you even get hurt in that fight? It was a little bit of everything, I think. I think the, the fight was very cool. I had three weight cuts back to back to back, January, April, and then May again. And uh, that was a mistake, too. I went to a takedown. I kind of measured the distance. I thought I thought it would be enough. I kind of just dive into the takedown. I didn't I didn't run my feet. And then he did a good job. He did a kind of kind of a down block defense. And when I landed, I landed with his weight and my weight on my left shoulder. Oh. And then that was a wrap. So... I think my body was a little, for sure, was a little, you know. Fatigue. A little fatigue. True training camps, true weight cuts. So it was a little bit, a lot on the body. But uh, no excuse, you know. I say yes. Like, whenever they offer the fight, hey, if whoever wins is the number, he's going to fight for the title, I will say yes again, you know. So mm -hmm. for sure, now I'm going to be a little bit more smart. With, with next decision, I'm kind of making more criteria. So I can get a fight. I need to be in shape. I need the base. I need the training camp. But yeah, very hard. Anyone that wants to overcome something, they come away. You wanna if you win that game, you're going to do a Super Bowl. If you win these, they all oh, we all fighters, we all athletes, we're, we're gonna say yes. Mm. Yeah. It's a lot of weight cut. That, that's yeah. it's, it's hard going back to back camps. You know, you can it is a such thing as getting overtrained, and and that's when you that's when you your immune system gets down, and you are you can get injured easy. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you do all your camps in Florida? All my camps are doing Florida. Same yeah. camp. Uh, I do. We kill Cliff FC. We got Henry Hoofy there. He's the, the main coach, and then we have a lot of other coaches. So many great fighters. We have the Bellator welterweight champion right now. Jason Jackson's over there. We got Michael Chandler. We got so many yeah. good guys over there. Logan Storley. A lot of so many, the bodies are so good, you know, so many good teammates that I have that I, that I don't need to go to another place. I still go do extra training there. So you're going to do boxing with a, a lot of Cubans, good boxers there. I'm going to box with these guys. Got a lot of jujitsu guys there. Go to, uh, to jujitsu places there. But I like to stay in South Florida. I like that. Yeah, Bear, Bear was saying you, you train boxing with Jake Paul. Is that true? <laughs> I never did. <laughs> Why you lying, man? I never said that. You never said you just you no. told me that before he came here. You no, said, I said yeah, maybe I saw it on the internet. No, you said, yeah, nah, Gibbert hands have been getting better since he's been training with Jake Paul. I'm like, man, what the fuck? He asked me if you train, I said maybe he did. I never did. I never did. Would so, you would so you would it. you would you train with Jake Paul? Would you spar with him? I would spar with him. Why not? How would you yeah. do against him? I don't know. He's getting better. Yeah. What did tell him what you were saying? How he would do that? You think that if he didn't have good defense, that Jake could maybe do something to him? No, I never no? said that, man. I got, I got all. You know why you cap? No, why I just you, want to make why sure. You cap? Okay. Now, I got, I got. No, no. I, I think he's one of the best fighters yeah. in his weight class. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't wait for him to, um, for be Jake. Cause you're American now, right? 
Both American and Brazilian? American Brazilian. Yeah. Both. Yeah, so so we want to bring that belt back here to to America. I'm I'm so glad that uh COVID didn't win. Yeah, Jesus. Hey, what what's your thoughts? I mean, Rampage was in here. We watched the press conference live with um Giga. Is that who we watched it with? Yeah, my yeah. Giga. Giga. <laughs> my Giga. Yeah, we watched it with him live. And uh, you know, obviously he went a little too far. And then he came out and he was just so flat. So on top of disrespecting everybody in the sport, then he comes out and doesn't even put on a show. What what are your thoughts on that that fight? I was there. I was watching. I was expecting a lot more too. Uh, he just, I think even even the whole thing like Conor McGregor be, became Conor McGregor because he talks a lot of crazy stuff, but he back it up. Right. So then you can't say shit about it. Say man, that guy's cocky. He talk a lot of crap, but he back it up. So you gotta kind of. At the end of the day, you got to applaud the guy because he showed up. Cheo Sonny, he still, like, he didn't become a champion, but he still did a couple of big fights. He showed up. But then this guy goes out there and talks for someone's dad. That, yeah, you, that's that crossing was, the line. That was messed up, bro. I that think was, that's crossing the line. For 100%, that's bad. And he don't show up. And it, if the way it feels like he felt bad that he said that because he had the... And the face off, it was just that was just the character. I'll say, okay, oh, well, now it was just like the character. And I think he put so much pressure on himself that he messed up. He, that's the same thing Coach Bobby you know? said. That's the that's same thing Coach Bobby said. He said, Coach Bobby was like, watch, now he got to go into his fight with that on his mind that he crossed the line and he said something really bad and he got to back it up. And he, mm. and, and I, I, I agree. I think that was, you can see it in his eyes. And there's so much pressure because sometimes, I don't like to talk a lot of shit. We're gonna fight. Yeah, if we talk a little bit, yeah, we will see. But I don't like to, you know, when you, we you know when you say something that you put in a lot of pressure on yourself and you freaking become a slave from that thing that you said. Yeah, that's why I don't want to say shit. Like, yeah, no way. Like yeah. I'm gonna make people interesting. We're gonna talk a little shit, maybe. Yeah. But I don't want to go. I'm not gonna cross the line. You know. I used to always like to talk a little shit, but the shit I say. The guy I'm saying about maybe if he had a sense of humor, he could laugh as well. Yeah. You know, I don't never take it too personal mm -hmm. unless they come at me too personal. I agree. I'll yeah. do the same. I try to make a little fun. Yeah. Try to, you know. It's but, entertainment at the end but, of the day. Yeah, but it's against the guy, you know. Like, whenever you go to family, like, those yeah. guys, yeah. even the guy, Ian Gary, the people going after his wife and talking a lot of crap and... Yeah. He, he just too much for me, you know. Yeah, he was wrong about that, but I would fuck Ian Gary's wife, though. I ain't gonna lie. But I, I'm not fucking no more married women. I'm done with fucking married women. But if that, if he wasn't married, I I would smash. Yeah, they married. <laughs> so I would never. Married. Maybe if they get a divorce, which is probably going to happen. He's having a heart attack just listening to it. That's how you know he's a real martial artist. Very and, respectful. But, but you was there at the fight. Was you? Was you I next? Was, to, was you next fight. to uh, Sean Strickland? I was on the side. Yeah, I think I saw you on that. The, the person that he said these, that was my wife and my kid. Oh, Wait, the kid yeah. that moved and the wife that, was that moved? my kid. Yeah. Yeah. Did you freak out? Yeah. No, because when we got there, when we got there, he. So, did Drikos was there, and I trained Drikos before. Good guy. And then when Sean came, he came, and then he kind of looked at the guy, and he kind of like, he he. I I think he's like, man, shit. And then he look, oh, and then he talks, oh, you brought your wife and your kids, and I say yes. Yeah, they they come, you know, Pantoja is my guy fighting. We got a couple guys from the gym. We all supporting the guys. And he say, yeah, these freaking guys right there. And I say, you know what? I might do something with this guy. That was before the fight when he walked in. He already had the, the uh, thing on his hand. Who, Strickland? Yeah. Uh, he, he didn't always, like it. He, don't he like already him. had it. And then and then he said, but your family's here. If I do something, I will give you the heads up. And then I said, okay. But I thought he was, you know when yeah, you- Yeah, yeah. You thought he was I'm joking. Gonna do, I thought he uh, was joking. And then whenever the thing started going down, this guy kind of looked at me and said, now and then he he asked my son <laughs> and my wife to move, so I just got in front of them. I said, I put one just got the corner, got in front of them, and bro, he went out like crazy. The thing that people don't see when they go, you, you know, those chairs from yeah. the fights, like when you don't sit, the, the seat goes up, yeah, right. So when then you get up, when you sit, the seat goes down, when you get up, the seat goes up. So he pushed the seat down when he stepped. But he stepped too much forward that the the, 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 seat, the seat kind of fell through. Yeah. 
And that's why they, they start scrambling a little bit. They kind of grapple a little bit. But then the guy kind of took him down and his leg was locked in the chair. Wow. And I was so scared with his chair. Yeah. Like he, they got cut. The Parillo video, you can see that I was hurrying like to yeah. take his foot out of the thing. But yeah, but that was my family so right there. When Sean took him down, did 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 he take him all the way down to the ground or no? He no, just no, fell no. In him. the chairs, in the other chairs. Yeah. They fell and we kind of holding and they they were they hitting? They hit each other a little Hard? bit. People didn't see that side of the camera. We saw because yeah. it was right there. It was nothing too clean. Even when <laughs> Strickland got up, mm. the guy, when they saw the fight, the guy kind of hold on him. So it was kind of a little bit back. Yeah, it, it was nothing clean. Nothing powerful. And then Dana came after the fight like, hey, what happened? So he said, one got hurt. Anyone need anything? No, nothing happened to anyone. Even those guys, they fought each other. Couple blows, but not even nah. this. He nothing. didn't hurt his knee in the chair. And if I was afraid of his oh, ankle, wow. his ankle, oh, but yeah. it was all good. He said it was good. And wow. he texted me after, hey, bro, I'm so sorry, but that guy was talking yeah. so much. He said, oh, whatever. And you gotta respect him. He, wow. he you yeah. gotta respect that he asked your family and stuff to move. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, for sure. Well, I saw a little girl or like a little kid, right? That was my son, bro. Yeah, yeah. it was a son. It was your yeah. daughter or your son? My son. And you at, did you move him I'll too? I'll show you. The, yeah, the, this yeah, is crazy. Hey, this is the inside intel that the Jackson podcast gets. That's this ain't my, on any other podcast right, right here. Right. That was my I son. I hope you guys appreciate son, this one. That's amazing. That's hey, hey, who got the best of each other? Sean Strickland get the best of them? I saw him throwing elbows he and stuff. To be honest. Yeah, but that one wasn't that no, clean, uh, you know? It was kind of like a little rush. And then when the guy fell on top of him, the guy threw a couple of shoes, but it was nothing. It was a draw. I saw was, you was, was I saw you, I saw you pushing somebody out the yeah, way. I was or something. pushing the guys, but then he fell and then I ran to and then I when I saw his foot, he was all like, <laughs> oh my God, look at this guy's foot. It was, right right there. it was a draw. It was a draw. It I was a draw. I don't think because right. he streaked start, but the guy finished. It was kind of like Ooh. I don't know the I don't know other the other guy, DDP. I never heard yeah. him to to to, oh, to, I never heard. I don't. Is he tough? He, he came to the gym a couple times. I like it because we spar hard. You know that guy that you spar hard. You're like, yeah. man, I like this guy. I bet he was hard because yeah. I seen him kissing dudes in the cage. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> What's up with that? Who? I don't know. Bro. No, 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 no. Don't trust me. Go back to your phone, dog. <laughs> I need to get. The, I need. See, that's What'd my you son. See? I saw it on Instagram. That's my son and my wife. Yeah. Let, let, pass that around when you get yeah. there. Oh. Your son got the same hair as you almost. Yeah, you know, bigger. He yeah, got yeah, crazy big, yeah. hair. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got to get him some Jackson chains. We have the new youth line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah. just asked me because yeah. I, I got for the oldest one. Okay. And then he asked, yeah, I wanted you. Said, yeah, okay, we, we now know. have all the youth chains, so we'll get him some Bro, new chains. Bro, one, Archuleta's wife hit me up about those youth. I didn't yeah. even know about them until she hit me yeah. up. We they, just launched it. We have the number one selling youth chains in America right Bro, now. Bro, that's a smart idea. Kids yeah. kids want yeah. the but No, they love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, right. so did anybody get hurt? Any of your kids? No, no, no. No, no. one got hurt. That's We're so cool. respectful. No, not even those guys got hurt. Yeah. They fought each did, other. Did they get in trouble? Dana got mad at them? Dana got... He, he came... He was just asking. Hey, is anyone got hurt? Everybody's good. Yeah, we good. Or whatever. Hey, so, uh, he didn't it, get mad at anybody? Uh, For sure. I, I guess he got mad at the guys a little bit that, because... That could go one worse, yeah, you know. Yeah. That could go bad. But it's gonna sell a lot too. Like, so you for can't sure. That, yeah. But but let's say if one of these guys are like my guy, my my family's not there, and the guy's my guy. That was gonna be yeah. you could get crazy. Man. Right, wow. right, right. Uh, you should have DDP on and ask him why he be kissing dudes after his fight, though. Yeah. yeah. Why'd he do that? Do gotta, you know? I don't know. <laughs> is, it, is, he he American? is he American? <laughs> He's he lives in South Africa. Is that in a South, South Af Africa? Is that a South Africa thing to kiss <laughs> they kiss on the mouth? I don't know. <laughs> But you trained with him. What was it like training with him? Bro, he came. He I did? Maybe, what? Maybe. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Why y'all was training? Like three three years ago, maybe. Maybe more. Well, the guy came in. We trained hard. The guy sparred hard. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all was training? Yeah, guys, yeah. But hey, real talk though. Did he try to kiss you on the mouth? Like you no. Got done when you take you down. I'll he elbow doesn't... that guy. No. No. Oh. no. If he would have kissed you while you were training. Elbow. 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 <laughs> ah. Yeah. But that's yeah, hey, but that's hey, you Italian. That's an Italian thing. Y'all kiss on the on the cheek, like oh. a French thing. But I'm yeah. not gonna look at you and be like, let me kiss your lips. That's so weird. <laughs> that's dog. weird, bro. I, any country, yeah. It, but they doing it right. But listen, ain't no shame to it though. They doing it's it okay. right, in, right in the. Have you seen the pictures? It's okay. What's wrong, Gilbert? It's okay. <laughs> you saw the touch. Yeah. Somebody, they touch. No, I didn't see what? the touch. You never saw the touch. No. Wait, what? You never saw it. I, I just oh saw the, my god. I just pull saw it the, Hey, you pull it up. No, I don't. You gotta pull up. You never saw it. Oh, he his coach was. 
like whenever <laughs> <laughs> I never seen it. You never saw it. You gotta pull up. Okay. Pull up, Bro, I just recently it. I told you I didn't know who the guy was. He got a fight with Sean Strickland and then the internet is uh, is like unfriendly. They've been posting pictures of him kissing some some dude after his fights. I was like, who is this that. guy? He, I, I said he that. can't be American. Is it th but this is the same guy that got into it with Izzy, right? They're calling each yes, other names yes. in the ring. Everybody's saying something because he's from oh, South Africa. Oh, that's the guy. Yeah, that's the, that's guy. the oh, that's the guy. He, he was he beat Robert Whitaker, and, yeah. and, oh. and then Izzy was there watching. I remember him. hearing about he's that. Saying, he's calling them the word and this and that. Oh, he was no, no. Izzy was saying the, end the word. whole thing. They were just arguing in the in, in the middle of the ring. Yeah, because he was saying that he's the only. But you said the annual word the other day that I saw here. That was uh, he, he. He said no. no. What? <laughs> he. Probably I saw it on the podcast. That was you or was the other guy? No, Mike here? Giga. That's uh, the was guy. G That's his Giga name. Said? No, Giga, no, no, no. Giga, Giga said it. <laughs> but Giga, what? Once it's the end of the word, that was you or that was Giga? No, no but they me. said it. Rampage would kill who me. Who did? I would. I don't give a fuck. I would but never who say did? that. But who did? Giga said it. Yeah, Giga. I don't, I don't care if people but he said it. But he's saying what they call him in yeah, another yeah, country. Yeah, he he's said. He's saying in a country he went. How they call him? Well, my Giga. No, no, no. What he, what he say? No, no, no. no you're not going to catch me. <laughs> I, I, jiu jitsu don't work in my mind. I'm a blue belt. <laughs> I see your defense. I told you. Same defense Jake Paul got. Be careful. Yeah, I, I, don't care. I don't care who said it. If you're not racist, you can say whatever the hell yeah. you want. I don't care. But who, No, but I saw one guy on the... On the no, that but was Giga. He, Giga, but he was explaining... I don't think it was Giga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just here. Mm. But he, when he doesn't wear a hat, he doesn't look like him. No, no, no. When I he, watched that. He looks I like a skinny him, Dana but... White when he doesn't wear a hat. You even look like what did you say? <laughs> okay. So I want to I want to know something though. MMA talk, no joking around. All right. in, in the gym, how strong was he? Because everybody talks about that no, he has he the good. heaviest hands. He has good good right hand. Oh, he and does. He does both stance, but the right hand, like we were training, we just started, you know. So we're not gonna start crazy. So I just he just came to the gym, but everybody liked the guy because that kind of guy that don't he don't give a shit, no complaint, trains hard. Yeah. And then I saw a couple guys going with him, and I looked like, oh, this guy's training hard, okay. And yeah, one round with this guy. And then we changed partners, then I went with the guy. Bro, we went down, like, hard. And then everything was, like, high level, but then the freaking right-handed, which is like, oh, my God, can I take those right hands like that no more? And you know, sparring? He going he hard in sparring. sparring? Yeah, no, we were both sparring super hard, but... He was going hard on you, huh? No, I was going hard on him. <laughs> no, I was being serious. No, I was being serious. You can't say that in the left. No, we were talking about hard sparring. You can't say that in the left. Okay. Wait, before we look at this video, why is it that you're okay with going hard and sparring? Aren't you scared of maybe getting hurt with a guy that's not from your gym? Maybe he's going to go too hard on you? No, we were going hard, both. But it's okay but with you? But when the freaking guy <laughs> don't laugh, I'm not. I didn't laugh. I'm gonna laugh. We I talk serious. We talk serious. Yeah, now. Yeah. Hey, I'm being serious. But you know when the guy throws a right hand, and say, "Oh, yeah. the guy hits." So I get mad. I get. Ma I get mad at that. You always gotta that. watch you out. Hate that. Yeah. I gotta gotta watch out. No, I, I'm. It don't bother okay you because. Uh, I'm getting ready to a fight. Something. That's why. Time, that's why I get so mad. I don't uh, mind. No, that's why I don't like. No, but then I want to, and 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 the thing that like that I know. Couple fighters have a lot of fights don't because we, we, we're getting ready to a fight, right? So whenever the first round start, everybody's a he's a good fighter, right? First round, but then I want to see. That's why I like to go to the fights a lot. I want to see when the when the struggle gets real, when the guy's bloody, he get he get tired, he got a body shot. That's when I see the real fighter, you know. So mm. I want to be mentally and physically ready to that in the training camp you know for sure when i don't have a fight i'm not going to spar as much i still like to spar a lot but you gotta spar like i don't i don't get that thing that oh this guy does i don't spar hard anymore like what do you mean but you're gonna fight like the timing is different right the coach is right there he the timing is different everything is different so i gotta feel that on the training a little bit i need mm. to get even a couple of days i'm gonna get beat up on training i know it but it's not it's how you're going to react when when shit is dirty. You want to like, feel the pressure. I want to feel that in the training. Wow. To be whenever I'm in the fight yeah. and she gets crazy. I've been there so many times. They're like, shit, is just another day. Yeah, but I, I, I understand what he come from 100%. Some people are are, are like that. And uh, Shootbox was like that. And 
Uh, I've heard stories them knocking each other out before they fight. It's, it's not like it's hard. Not like that. Yeah, I'm not gonna oh. throw a. If I'm throwing knees, you're gonna put a knee knee uh, a knee pads. Knee if pad, you're yeah. throwing elbows, you're gonna put. But like a knee, I'm not gonna throw a fucking freaking flying knee on the guy. You know, we we're going hard. Wait, let me let me ask you a question. Why did you say not like shoot box? No, because those guys. If you if yeah. you if you take a look and you do a little research with the sparring over there, those guys were knocking each other out bad. Like, yeah, I heard ninjas. Cold. I heard ninjas yeah. not right right now. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, it's, not. it's from it's from it's from the sparring. Those guys fly knees with no knee pads in the training, bro. That's that. Why did they train like that? Yeah, I don't know. I think I don't, I think to be honest, I think they didn't know better. They mm. would they think that we're making each other better. But those guys were mean, bro. Like they you, said, "Have you ever trained with them?" Shoot no, off. not no. But they they used to go crazy. I heard a couple crazy stories in Brazil that the you guys hear? getting knocked out bad, like yeah. in the training, getting ready to a fight. Any big names? And guys from yeah, Anderson Silva. These guys, everybody was going there to train. These guys before he get when he was cage cage warriors cage rage. Yeah, cage when warriors. He, I think when yeah. he was the champion, people went there to train in Brazil. <sighs> That was not training. That was a fight. Yeah. You know, like fight, even, even the, he said, even the sensation, like you go out there, you talk, yeah, you're going to train. Yes. In their separate side, yeah. you get ready, you got the timing. Yeah. And the guys are going to kill this guy. Da, 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 <laughs> like that, you know, like. I've heard he, stories. It was stories yeah. in pride. What there. was the original team there? Because they had some Shoot of the craziest box, yeah. names. Yeah, yeah. But what were the original fighters? They had what? like a crew. Uh, Vandalay, Vandalay. Yeah. He fought everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's the whole pride crew. And, yeah. uh, and the two cyborgs, right? Yeah. The cyborg. Yeah, the, 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 the husband two, and, yeah, and yeah. the wife. Yeah. yeah. And the. Uh, That's yeah. all the ones. Silva, Shogun Rua. Shogun Rua. Ninja. Anderson. Who else? Was Fedor? No, 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 no. Fedor is from Vanderlei? Russia. Vanderlei, yeah, yeah. Vanderlei, yeah. he's trolling. Vanderlei, uh, <laughs> he's trolling. He's trolling. <laughs> Vanderlei, we got a couple more guys there. We have Pele. Pele. Yeah, Pele. He was like a real OG Pele. one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we got a couple other guys too. But like, so right here we have your video that you wanted to talk about, Rampage. Oh, that's the one. No, I didn't know nothing about this. Look, look, okay, look, keep looking. Just <laughs> push, push, play. Let's see what, he, what he's doing. Is there any sound? No. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, why? 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 Wait, hold up. Like, Rewind that. Hold on, hold on. That's, that's We're looking at a video right now. Bro, TDP. That's, bro, that's in between. That's that's in between rounds. Like, you don't got a cup check. Like, the <laughs> cup was already checked. Well, and, what's up with the grab? And and, 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 and and the commission said, get your sis ass out of here. He pushed him out. Bro, what? what that's a what full do you grab. Think? What do you think? I mean, I want to take uh, the high road here and say that coach was just making sure that the cup was there aligned properly and ready for battle. But I feel like Rampage has a different theory. <laughs> what are you thinking, What's Rampage? <laughs> okay, this this is my theory. Like, I, I accept everybody for he however they want to be. But I think that um, we got young men watching and they can get kind of confused. <laughs> and they think MMA fighters are, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Not straight. What would you do if Henry yeah. did that to you? <laughs> Henry would not do that to me. <laughs> would you? Hey, would yeah. you fire your trainer for checking your cup in between rounds? <laughs> I'm like, you Henry, fired. No, let Coach, yeah, let Coach Bobby check my cup in between rounds. Knock that cut. Yeah, right, Coach, move. two fights <laughs> but, in one night. I'm like, Coach but, Bobby, you fired. You checking? You checking my cup? In Brazil, they should do a lot. Throwing the water, uh, like, yeah, yeah. on you. Yeah, I heard that. she that. wakes you up, like. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's okay. I had that done before. Vitor did that. Vitor cornered me a couple of times, and sometimes he just. Down your nuts? Yeah. yeah. Really? That wakes you up, like. That's uh, not that's not the homosexual yeah. about that. No. No, what? but you get, and the water was freaking cold, and the way he throws you, are oh, That's not the homosexual about that, but what yeah. if he had been drinking the water, and he spit it down, <laughs> down <laughs> he spit what? it down your pants. That, but, what do you that, think about they it? Have, they have a Russian dude, too, that they. But, I've seen on, that, the, on the PFL that yeah, he, he spits it on you. He spits, but like you know, like you like seen like, like like uh, like Bobby Green does. He does that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Triple, did H, that on Triple H, Bobby he Green. Did yeah, that, yeah. He did that on the guy's face. The coach did. The coach got the yeah. wife. Yeah, Here, the try PFL. it on Rampage. No, 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 no. We know we talk about. All right, he goes and pick it. We know we talk about. You try it one time. No, no, on him. I just want to see what happens. That's gross. No respect. No respect at all. See what happens. No, that's that's gross. I wouldn't like if a coach spit. Water on my face. All right, well, then let's call it true so we can finish the interview. Let's just finish the interview. You, you kicked me off with this Jake Paul thing. You already you kicked off the battle. Yeah, All let right. me see this PFL human spray bottle. That's the one. Oh, oh that's <laughs> gross. Right in his mouth. His, oh, my. His God. mouth was open. It's like an Alibaba comes at Jamal right there. Dude. I bet, I bet, what is that? I bet, oh bro, you fired. I bet, God, bro, you, you fired, bro. Oh, I, my. <laughs> <laughs> like, you fired.
Coach Bobby, don't ever spit water in my face. Oh, hey, 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 try it, try it. Don't do that. I said, <laughs> I break this whole table right now. Yeah, I'll show you shoe box right now. For my knees right here. Let me hear. Let me. Let me no, 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 no. You guys are crazy. Yeah, that, I don't know what you guys are drinking. It's not water. Both of you guys. These coaches are crazy, right? Man, man, why? Why would you do one that? One check, the other one speak. You got a lot of video playtime. You've been watching a lot of coach, a lot of coach videos. You you watch a lot of MMA fights. I watch a lot. Like, watch I like that. I like the boxing Student fights. The I like the kicking boxing fights. Yeah. I watch the, the the grappling fights a lot. A lot of grapplers are boring, but I try to always see what these guys are doing different, what mm -hmm. is new, like the, the new guy, what are they doing, how they do. I, like, I follow a lot of fights. I like, that's what I like the more. I like a lot of sports. Like I said, I like to watch the, the fighters' mentality. Like, oh, this guy's tough. And, say, and like, for example, like Bo Nico, right? I think this guy's going to be very good. He, he, they, but he's never been tested. I want to see. Mm. I don't want to see he's getting another, you know, another yeah. guy and just finish. I want to see like that guy get cut open. Mm. Cannot finish the guy. Maybe cannot take the guy down second round, third round. Freaking tired. Pressure. That's what I want to see. How he gonna react? You know. Even when I go to my kids are crazy American football. They both train. They both play. They they. My oldest one won. They won the season. The, the <clears throat> so we go to a lot of dolphin games or all the games. We watch the games. But even that, those guys that don't, I like it. But they celebrate too much, you know. The guy do one touchdown. They all doing dancing, and they do one little thing. They dancing. But I want to see when the game is tight, right? And they got to score, and you freaking quarterback, and you got to make a decision. And you're making the play. That's what I like to see you doing the pressure. Let me see what this guy's gonna do now. Now this that's yeah. what I like in the sports the did, most. Did you watch football when you was in Brazil or is just when you soccer, yeah. When I soccer. moved here in Brazil yeah. it was just soccer and fight. That's it. Here yeah. when I moved here, I started doing a lot of more American football. Basketball, and you watch that? Basketball, not as much. Just the playoffs I watch a lot, yeah. but not no more season, no, not much. Yeah. You talk about being tested, and obviously we known you for being a uh Killer, killer in the ring. I mean, you really stand there. You'll bang with the best of them. You'll take any fight. You know what it's like to be tested. What do you think Patty did? Do you think Patty proved enough against Ferguson? Do you think Patty has been tested? Do you think that's another fighter that we need to see be tested? I think he's still super young. And he's going through the test. He's still in the fit in the UFC. He beat a couple of good guys. Jerry Gordon now. Tony, Tony. Unfortunately, Tony's not the Tony that we all like it, you know? Yeah. I'm still a fan of the guy. I think he's a freaking legend, but he's kind of going down now. But the guy showed up because Tony, Tony, he's kind of like that old guy, you know, the, the the old shark. If he smells that blood, if he sees it, he's going to take it. I think the guy fought very good. Still, like I said, I still need to get tests, you know, still got to get, I still think he still got to get to that point that like, Let's see what he's going to do in that last round now. He lost first round, lost second one. Let's see it now. I still want to see those guys test. But still very young, good jiu-jitsu. When I was in the in UK training with him, the guy's guy serious. He takes super serious training. He, <clears throat> good guy, looks, trains hard. I think, but still got to be tested a little mm -hmm. bit more. Was he really big when you when you trained with him? No, he was in shape. Yeah. He, he, had, he had a surgery on his ankle, but he was already, there was... Four months ago, mm -hmm. but he was already off. I think I'm gonna fight December. Yeah, it's gonna be a good fight. They say they're gonna test me this and that. So he was already in shape. He was already training oh, hard. Okay, because yeah, because people say he blow he, up after. He blow up. I yeah. used to do that. It's not good. I but he's too young. Like I said, he's twenty what five six. So he's too yeah. young. He can get away. He with still it. can get away a little bit more. But he's like like I said, four months ago when I was in the UK, he was already in shape. I think he's he's slowly he's learning. And um, yeah, he was, he, yeah, he's legit, you know, still very young, but he's a le legit fighter. Yeah. For those of the, the MMA community that don't know a lot about your history, you you train jujitsu and you're a part of a legendary, you know, lineage. And, and the guys that you kind of know and came up with, like Vitor Belfort, for example, what's the relationship between them, Gracie's? Like, tell us a little bit about the jujitsu history for you real quick. Uh. When I, when I started training was in my city, like my dad, he started, he, he used to work at home, broke in the, fixing the car. So one guy came, one of the clients had the gi inside and uh, my dad in exchange for the service, he got us training. So that's how we start training. 
we shouldn't have very small gene, very tiny, and that culture was a little crazy. We should all try to get on the politician. So that gene ended up breaking, but me and my brother was the guys that was kind of getting after that gene that was put in the work. So he brought us to the biggest gene in the city. And he he even got us the deal to train for free. And then at that that gene was a, a message. He just passed away like four months ago, old, like 87, 88. He was black belt from Elio Gracie, but that gene actually was affiliation with Novo Neon, with Young Entrepreneurs, all these guys. So when I was 12, I started training by f one year that gene, then he moved us to the other gene. Then when I started training, we started going to Novo Neon very early. I was 14, 15, I was already going there. And I saw like Vito Shaolin, all, all the guys coming up in MMA, but very, very young. And I already like it very much, and I already want to do it. And then, and then Pedro he, Pedro Rizzo was the 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 striking coach over there, and I saw Jose Aldo moving to Brazil, moving to Rio, and everybody coming in. And I was focused on jiu-jitsu, but I already like it MMA, you know. So I still had that goal to become a, a jiu-jitsu world champion in the black belt. But as I already saw Jose Aldo, fuck jiu-jitsu, I'm gonna do you. MMA, Vitor Shaolin, like everybody coming up. And Rio was a lot of that, you know, we have all the crazy history, crazy stories, those guys going to any other gene and, and challenging the guys, you know, if jiu-jitsu is better than this, whatever it was. So it's a crazy, it's a crazy story in, in, in Rio, you know, that kind of like now the culture is kind of changing, you know, because a lot of the fighters move out of Brazil, they in the U.S. and everywhere. But when I was there, it's still like very strong. Yeah. Here and there, we got fights on the beach, fights everywhere. And back then, we had no guns, you know. It's not it's not easy to get a gun. Nowadays, everywhere is easy. But so anything that happened was going to be a fight. And then it's <laughs> crazy to see the story. Like now, now they saying like they have a lot of rivalry with jiu-jitsu, with luta livery, with, a, with all other, every martial arts was rival with each other. And we have a lot of places in Rio too. So if you're from that area, we don't like you at this area. And and I don't know, just from the style, from the culture, you can sense, you can see that the guy's not from there. Mm. And a lot of fights, and I saw so many fights happening, and those guys don't even talk. That's what crazy, like nowadays it's so different because we get all the trash talking. Those guys are so good at talking. And back then, like if I'm from... A, a area that was right with your area and you're walking by and they were kind of looking at each other. We don't even say nothing. And I'm looking at you and they're staring at you, staring at me. We just do kind of, what's up? But it's not even talking, just like, and you do this, we, they start fighting. Like the, the 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 fighting culture in Rio was that big, that crazy. That's why I got a lot of guys into fighting. You know, it's, it's changing now. Yeah. But that was crazy. Like the whole story is the Gracie is going to the jeans and doing yeah. that. Everybody want to be one of these guys. Everybody want to start yeah. doing jujitsu. Yeah, it was crazy times in, in, you, in Rio. You used to train um, with Pedro Hizro? Yeah, but I was very young. I was only doing jujitsu, but I saw these guys start doing MMA and they doing the whole transition. And I saw Pedro Rizzo there. I was just like, wow. Man, I heard that he has the hardest leg kick in, <laughs> yes. in MMA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah he, I, crazy. He's a legend. You know who he yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. He's a legend in, in, uh, yeah, from Brazil. His, crazy. his striking was phenomenal. He, he was at the UFC there on the, on the, on the weekend. He we, was there? He was there. He was there. And uh, I was commentating the LFA on Friday, the, the little small organization. And he's fighting the main event. The guy was, the guy's going to be in the UFC pretty soon. He lost a title fight. <laughs> He lost to a Russian Dagestani dude. The dude was, he didn't do much, but the dude was just, dude got like three knockdowns, but was able to wrestle recover, and yeah, put recover. the guy down. Don't even did a lot of damage, just kind of holding. But that dude, that Pedro Rizzo dude is going to be in the UFC pretty soon. Oh, okay. He was that legend, like crazy. The striking is good? Sharp. He was going to Holland, like whenever Holland, all the Dutch kicking boxing was coming, he was living there. He would stay there for the whole year. Spawning all Peter Arts, all all these high level guys, and then he was fighting MMA back then too. So, yeah, different. Going back to um, Brazil, why do you think the Brazilian fighters are moving out of there? Because of the danger and because of gu guns are so rampant there and stuff. Yeah, and to make it to make a living too, very hard to to live in Brazil right now. Even even though when I go there, I was just there 
three times this year. But every time that I go there, it's so expensive. Like, it's still not expensive for us because, like, uh, one dollar is five over there. Mm. Mm. But it's kind of like the same proportion. Like, one water there, a bottle of water here is like one dollar, maybe nine. Depends on where you go. Yeah, though, yeah. But let's say the cheapest ones, yeah. one dollar. Yeah, like, yeah. no, no. You go there, the cheapest water is like four dollars, five dollars. Are you serious? F Four reais, five. It's kind of like the same. Yeah. But mm. people there doesn't make that much money. Yeah. Like, it's not it, adding up. Like, it's yeah. not, it doesn't add enough. Yeah. Even with the exchange, if you do all, it doesn't add up. What so. about the cost of living if you buy a nice house? Say you buy a nice three bedroom house in Rio. Oh, it's expensive. Yeah. Uh, three bedroom house over there on okay place might be worth 700 reais, 800 maybe. What's but, that? What's that reais? How much is that here? Divided by by one dollar is five over there, so one dollar divided by five over there. You still can make like if I really want to buy something big there, I can. Yeah. But it's so expensive and so dangerous. If you get in a nice place, then it's gonna be more expensive. And, and people might try the, to come and, and home the, invade and stuff. Maybe, but yeah. the the thing that that's crazy in Brazil, like and that's the difference from from the the U.S. in Brazil that I think the, is the biggest one, like right here. If the guy really hustles, if, if you see that the guy's working super hard, that guy's gonna eventually he's gonna make it, right? He's gonna make money because the guy's very smart and he put on the work. Eventually, at that job, he's not gonna do good, but eventually he moves to a different company or he open up. He gonna make it, right? Mostly, when this guy's really a hard worker and he's smart, he's gonna make it. Oh, these guys in Brazil, oh my god, they're gonna work so hard and that's it. That's why everybody that has an opportunity. If you grow so much, like if you get as big as Aldo, uh, Charles, Oliveira, if you get that big, they can stay there. But if it doesn't, on the beginning, show hard, they all move out of there. Like how many jiu-jitsu black belts you can see here in the US? Like everywhere you yeah, go is a, yeah. is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu academy because those guys did good, they, I'm out. Bro, the know? grass is always green. Have you ever been to Brazil? No. Bro, I'm telling you, I I went there and I loved it. Uh, I went it, there. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. I went there one, my first time. I went there with Fabiano Iha, and he took me to San Paulo. Took me to a nightclub. You know, I like the nightlife. It's, it's nice. It's right? nice. I went there. He wanted me to sit at this table. Said, huh? You sit at that table. And I'm walking to the table, and it was like ten models there. I'm talking about yeah, at the he's, table, he's like, that. like dimes like and twelves. I was like, no, nah, I don't want to sit at that table. They, uh, they like were too. That. They, yeah. they were too hot. They no? was too. I, I don't even think I was. I wasn't even worth it sitting around those girls. That's how hot oh, they my. were. No, you, you did like that in Brazil. Yeah, bro. So you've been serious. in Brazil how many times? Uh, well, how many times I've been there? I've been there two times. One time I I, I trained in Hisifi. Oh yeah, and I was Hisifi's there for like six. Nice yeah, That's yeah. nice. Yeah, I was there for like six weeks training. Yeah, yeah. but Brazil, bro. People are very nice. They're mm -hmm. very welcome. The place is beautiful. Yeah, beautiful a lot of yeah. beautiful places. Just to make a living there is very hard. Yeah, the economy yeah. and, and where the they're economy at, super especially bad, politically. Yeah. Politically, see a lot of those videos. It's like very that, bad. that one video, there's a like an entire market being overtaken in that whole little city. Yeah. It's hard. The whole world after uh, the the pandemic, I think, had a lot bad, of restructuring. Right. Yeah. As we look at Brazil, and speaking of Brazil, you've had one of the most iconic entrances with your Brazilian yeah. flag wrapped around your head. Where did that yeah. come from? Brazil. No, the flag around that he wraps around his head. That 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 that, that flags for my brother. My brother is a military. There, he's like a, a Navy SEAL. It, it's the same thing as a Navy SEAL, but we don't go to war. Brazil doesn't go to war, but they still do missions. He's still a Navy SEAL there, but he works as a as a SWAT, like a Secret Service SWAT. Wow. That's kind of like what he does. Wow. And then he had that one from his uniform. And then one time I was looking for a bandana to go in Brazil, but I couldn't find. I find, but it wasn't. It was a nice one. And then when I saw this flag, I said, I'm going to use this one. And then we got into a little fight, but he's bigger. <laughs> and then I'm like, shit, let me get it. And then I got it. As soon as I got it, it was very nice the way I wear. Everybody tried to wear a lot. Of, not everybody, but like I sh a lot of people try to wear, but it's not as nice. as Mine doesn't stay here very nice. But I never give it back. When I'm the same time. <laughs> now he's done. Now he got a different one. But for like for a whole year, or maybe three years, say, where's my flag? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, That's we, cool, though. Yeah. We see, you know, you talk about grappling and jujitsu, and you train with some of the best. And most yeah. people, they win a world championship at a gi, and then it stops there. But you have a no-gi world championship as well. Yeah. So you know the best of both worlds when it comes to jujitsu. 
how good do you think guys like the the Nicky Rods and the Gordon Ryans, all these new guys that are just doing grappling and submission wrestling and the Rotolo brothers, how good are they? Do they have what it takes to to make the jump to MMA? I think so. Especially yeah. those guys that they they do have a heavy wrestling, you know. They're not a, a jiu-jitsu player that just pulls guard. They're soft, you know. Those guys, a couple, couple ADCC fights, those guys throw each other after the like they hurt each other. You can see they mean they they get a heavy wrestling. I just think the guys with the good submission, like when they when the submission game of the jiu jitsu is very high, like the Hutu Wolo brothers, those guys have a high level jiu jitsu. Then they're like twenty, like they different level, yeah, and they so young. Yeah. But they go to a competition. They they they, it's not they, it's not the type of jiu jitsu that they're gonna take you down and wait up and win by points. These guys really try to finish you, and they so athletic. They so good with the wrestling, with the judo throws. With every different submission, the leg locks, the the taking back like a guillotine, arm bars, they're so good everywhere that I do believe they're gonna do great in MMA if they do. Especially the Roots Wallows brothers, Nicky Rod. I don't think Gordon ever goes to, to MMA. No. I don't think. I don't think so. He, I think he's doing too good. At, yeah. uh, doing a lot of money right yeah, now. Yeah. I, Nicky Rod say he don't want to go, but no disrespect to John Jones. But I think if anybody out there that can have a chance of beating John Jones, I think it's Nicky Rod. I've been I've been if really thinking can, yeah. yeah, I've really been thinking about this because his wrestling is oh, so good and his ground game is, is yeah. like crazy. And, and that would be that would be a, a good fight because John Jones Damn. is is training with with, with with Gordon Ramsey. You know? <laughs> Gordon, so, <what>? Gordon Ramsey. <laughs> Ryan. Oh oh Come on, man! They, they, their names is they got their names is you know who who Gordon Ramsay is? Yes, yes. yes the, the chef. <laughs> 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 but 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 don't don't you think that Nicky Rod what? <laughs> what I think Nicky Rod can do very good. Yeah, I've, especially he's so athletic. Yeah. Like a couple of guys, you look and you you make those guys kind of hit pads a little bit and try to move those guys are so stiff, so bad. But he can move. You know, I think he's very athletic. If you get the guy with a good boxing coach, I think he can learn it and then. And then he can throw hands. Maybe have maybe this guy have have hands. We don't know. Man, but. If I was his manager, man, I'd make him train boxing for uh, boxing and Muay Thai. Just boxing and Muay Thai for a little while. Yeah. And then. But you think he's going or no? No, he don't want. He's too pretty. He's a pretty boy. He don't want no, to do no MMA. He's making too much money. Nicky Rod makes so much money doing jujitsu now. I think Nicky Rod, the Rotolos are one championship, ADCC championship. Gordon Ryan makes all this money. I think those guys are going to stay there just because they're making so much money. But think, how, think about how much money they could make if no, they but, come to the uh, UFC. Yeah, but that, that's going to be my question. But how much money is in jujitsu? Like, I, I mean, I don't think there's this guy's as much not money. making like half a million dollars every he's five talking, million. You know, dollar he's, he says he's talking money. like he's making millions. I, yeah. Oh. Nicky Rod, that's what he said. He's talking like he's. I think, I think I think Gordon's Rod, making a lot of money. I think Nicky Rod and Gordon make make crazy money. I think the Rotolos get paid crazy from one. I think Gordon Ryan is making a lot of money. Not not is because he adds up. You know, he does his sponsors, and then he does the super fights, and then he does his DVDs. Mm -hmm. And then I, and then I I saw I work with the guys that did his DVDs. When I saw the numbers on the DVDs, I say, oh my god! Like, and then he keep doing those series. You know, it's not like it's not that it's done. Okay, I'm now I'm gonna do a top control, and then I'm gonna do sweeps, and then I'm gonna do back control, and then I'm gonna do submissions, and then I'm gonna do, and he's always making that new new thing, you know, and he sells a lot. DVDs, nobody even watches yeah, DVDs. He's not, no, 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 he, calls, he DVD, calls it DVDs, but, but they're streaming but he, like clinics. Uh, they, 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 it's kind of like. What, yeah, like a streaming, like a seminar. They yeah. send it to you, you know, uh, so on you the internet, buy online, like it, OnlyFans, but for, but for, yeah, yes. they kind of call it DVDs, but yes. it's, it's yeah. not DVDs. But it's no, like no, it's no, like he, OnlyFans he for fighters. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you can you can, you subscribe like masterclass. No, but he 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 doesn't do like he doesn't do a membership. He uh. does every like what two three months. He he makes he a new thing. But how do you make money? They they got to buy it before yeah, they can yeah. watch they it. Gotta yeah. buy it. But yeah, he, he's not worried about people watch. like screen recording. They don't. And he posted no. his sales. He did it like a million dollars just on he one. He does over a million dollars. Man, I need yeah. to do some jujitsu DVDs. Yeah. Yeah. You need to go do jujitsu. You make a couple. When you retire, would you go and do jujitsu or tournaments? I, 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 I would do tournaments in jujitsu for sure. Yeah, for sure. And now I like to train a lot. You know, it's not in, some, the, in the both. I like now. I do way more no gi. I still have my program running with the gi. Those guys love me when I go there. But yeah, I think I'll compete. You know, otherwise, I, yeah. I so I always have that something that I got accomplished. You know, so whenever I'm done with MMA, I, I'm gonna put another goal 
It's going to be related with a lot of other business, a lot of things that I want to do, but I still got to give a little competition in there. Got to be yeah. maybe a gear or no gear. Would when you I sell the DVDs? I think I would do those DVDs. Too. I'd buy one. Yeah. These guys, but these guys are oh, doing sure. good because, mm-hmm. and, and the thing that he does, he like, let's say he trains to be, I don't know, that guy. And then he, okay, well, with this guy, I, I'm going to look for this sequence. And this is going to go there and do the sequence that he said he's going to do. And then he sells the sequence. Oh, uh, yes. He so writes that, it down. That's he how writes he it down before the fight. Yeah. He wrote it down does. before the fight. How I'm going to beat this guy. Good. Gordon Ryan did this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to write exactly how I'm going to beat this guy. Then he tucks it away and he leaves it with someone. Mm-hmm. And then when he wins, someone comes and gives it yeah. to him and he reads it. And it's exactly how he submitted the guy. <laughs> Come on, but he can write down five different ones and say, huh? No, but then no, he makes a sequence. It's just like you. He has like a whole video But series. it's just oh, like okay. you. Oh, I'm going to beat this guy. We're going to do a boxing fight. I'm going to beat this guy with these punches and this and that. And then later... After the fight, you release a training with all the punches they say you're gonna do. Oh, right sequence. after the fight, so yeah. you. Right after. Oh, okay, okay. And okay. then a couple of weeks later, you oh, okay. Dude, I again. just I just made a DVD how I beat this guy, like how you want to beat the southpaw when he comes. The uppercut's gonna be there, but you step here, you throw these. That's smart that, business, though. That's how he does. And yeah. He's doing great. Yeah. And well, he does you, crazy number. Do you think as we look at MMA and going into the, your your UFC fight, you're gonna be UFC two ninety nine, right? Yes, it's a, it's a big fight. You're fighting against a, an 11th ranked fighter, but you're one of the best in the division. You should be getting a title shot yeah. at any time that you want because of the, the fights and the battles you've taken. Do you feel like you should be given a, a, a top four, top three contender? Are you happy with the fight or you just take what they give you? Uh, like, if if I go like that, if I want to see it like Kobe just fought, he's not going to fight for a while. Uh, Leon just won. Bilal is next. Kamaru is not fighting right now. If we're kind of looking for the numbers, a lot of guys that the number makes sense is not there. So the way I see is I'm coming from a loss. I got to go there and get a win. And then I'm on the conversation again. And this guy's very tough. Like I said, he's six and no in the UFC. He got crazy knockouts, good boxer, heavy boxer. But he's not just a regular boxer. He rips the guy's body, bro. Mm. He comes forward like kind of like Costa, the way he fights, comes forward, mm. rips the body. So the guy's a good guy. You know, he's a good, he's a, he's that guy that is very tough. That's a little bit scary there. He, yeah. I like that when I feel like, oh shit, if, I, if I'm not 100%, she might get crazy. Yeah. You know? so, How's his wrestling, this guy? Wrestling defense is okay. You know, the last, I didn't, I got to watch his last, watch his last two fights. He, he that had a split decision against Kevin Holland. Mm-hmm. And the one before was short notice. He's supposed to be a very good wrestler, uh, Sean Brady. Mm-hmm. This guy pulled out and then he fought a newcomer, but that was a wrestler too. That's one that I really got to watch everyone. You go watch it that one and say no. Because they said the guy's style is kind of like yours and they feel that the guy won, but they gave it to him. It was a split decision. Mm-hmm. But the guy took him down a couple of times. Though. I, that's the fight that I got to watch. But I like when the, like... Coming back to your question, I I just gotta go back to the win, you know. I gotta and 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 I don't know if you guys seen, but everybody's kind of hating a lot on Bilal Muhammad right now. That he's mm-hmm. fighting for the title, but he got ten ten wins streak. Mm-hmm. But people were still like, yeah, you know why? Because his style is a little a little bit boring, you know. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't. When I fought with him, I lost. Like I said, no excuse. Shoulder was damaged in the fight, and I was fighting with the one armor, literally. Like, I was just with one armor fighting this guy. And this guy didn't try to finish me, right, Paige? Think about it. Now, you as a promoter, you the guy or whoever wins, fights for the title, and you see one guy is hurt, and the other guy is not trying. He's just getting yeah. bad. So that's why, like, the fans get a little bit. And that's what my style speaks to itself, too. Like, if I'm going to a fight, that's why I got this fight with this guy too. I think if I just go out there and get a decision win against Jack Madalena, my next fight, it doesn't say as much. Mm. But if I go out there, knock this guy out or get a crazy submission, smash this guy during three rounds and finish, I'm back on the conversation. Yeah. You know? yeah. So that's the way I see it. Like yeah. everything today, every business. Jake Paul business, boxing, MMA, UFC. You go out there and you perform. 
Everybody next day they're gonna be, oh my god, you will watch this guy. No, you didn't watch it. Look at here, they're gonna show you. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you see this guy? No, oh look. Oh, they say to each other, man, that that's the thing that's going yeah. on today. Yeah. So yeah. every time that I'm going to a fight, I'm getting prepared. I'm getting prepared to the worst. That's why I'm gonna throw in freaking hard. Like, who's the hardest guy on the gym? Can you can you do a little bit, Jack Madalena? Yes, let's let's go. <laughs> because when it's March 9, when it that that's that's with me, you know. That's my thing. When I step on the octagon, I just it's a little. I kind of go back and say, did I do everything I could to be ready today? And, and if if honestly, he's a yes. I'm oh, fuck yeah. Let's go. Hey, if we see a picture of him kissing DDP in the gym, we know <laughs> he's been training hard with that <laughs> with a guy with the hard right hand. <laughs> but now, but now we got Brandon Allen, like a couple other guys at the gym that they kind of. They kind of beefing a little bit uh, with, with DDP, so I don't think he's going to he, come. He's not going to come back. He's coming back. Come, he's not coming back. He tried to kiss him in the gym? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> when we we got to bring him here to the body guy. So we I, kiss I, I, Hey, DDP, yeah. if you're watching this, I need you to hit me up. Just DM me. Oh, Actually, wow. Yeah, you yeah. want him to hit you up? <laughs> no. <laughs> you want him to slide in your DMs? <laughs> DM Rampage. He's nah, the one nah, who requested nah. he, you. He, nah, nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, yeah. he requested him. Yeah, I did. I, I, I want to ask. Play, I want to. I do got to ask him. I do got. I, I, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. He don't care. It's yeah. easy for him to do he this. Care. He's 6'2", 220, knows how to fight. Me, no. I'm a blue belt. I, I can't. Yeah. I gotta sit here and take it. What you gonna do? You gonna take it? If a, if a, if <laughs> MMA, what you gonna do? If MMA, if an MMA fighter try to kiss you, you gonna take it? I'm gonna hit him with that Riddick bow right here. I'm gonna hit him with that overhand. Absolutely not. What? <laughs> and what? Hey, G hey, Gilbert walked in the gym. He found out I got a blue belt. He submitted me 14 times in one minute. He said, I don't know if that blue belt's for you. <laughs> you remember that? No, but you were out of shape. He was coming back. Now yeah. you're in good shape. Now you're yeah. training. And I trained with your, your boy. He's also a black yeah, belt. Jason. Yeah, Jason. Jesus. Yeah, he's my black belt. Hey, yeah. honestly, all joking aside, he saw that I was training jujitsu. This is how, this is why I always liked him. Stand up guy, one of a kind. I'm not making this up. Walks into Ruka. We're training on the mats, and I'm telling him, yeah, I'm excited. I've been training every morning. BJ Penn broke, like, three of my ribs. Alan Goes was training me. I was trying to get my, my, my belt. He saw me, and I'm like, yo, can you help me? Smashed me. But then he spent time to teach me what I was doing wrong or try to help me and then let me train with Jason. I was like, damn, dude, jujitsu. It's like when you train with someone or when you get to, to learn from someone this great, it makes you love the sport. Like, that's why I fell in love with fighting, right? Like, it's like you can watch something and learn from people. I feel like that's why MMA has such a dope community. Because mm -hmm. the what what sport, like, I don't see basketball players in the middle of the season on podcast. No, like, no, no. You know what I mean? It just this doesn't is the best happen. Sport. This yeah. is the best sport. Yeah. So, but it was, it was nice. Yeah, I saw he's in love with jiu-jitsu. He's training. Oh, I'm training. Say, oh, really? The next day I was there in the morning. He was there. I said, oh, shit, this guy's really training. And he was asking, say, yeah, let's train a little bit. And then for sure... Like for you, sometimes a couple of things are very easy, yeah. and you see the guy struggling. You say, "Hey, try this, this, and that." That's that was all I did. But he was training. He, he was. Training. You got a bunch of students. I got I got my program at the gym at Kill Cliff. I got the program there. I haven't been. I was there like maybe three weeks ago. Just post a video because we did a challenge because the a lot of white belts were new and they were very good at competing. Mm. But I couldn't spend time. I was traveling. I was doing. And we had a little challenge. They asked me to sub how long it's gonna take to submit all the white belts. And then I said, no, that's that couple white belts are like, good, like strong good wrestlers. Mm. And I said, no, that is gonna take forever because I had like maybe 30, 25 um, white belts. I said, you're no. still, you got 25, 30 white belts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. At my, but I have my black belt that he teaches. Yeah. But I said, no, if we do that, it's going to take me a while. And then right. I'm going to get tired. Let's do 10 minutes, how many I can submit. And I got like maybe eight guys, maybe. In so, 10 minutes? Yeah, wow, but those good. guys, yeah, I just posted that video. Yeah. So those guys were good. We're having a blast. But when I'm done fighting, I'm going to teach you more. I like I like to do gi. I like to put the gi. I like the lifestyle training. Do you, I like do you teach no gi as well? Or just I do gi? no gi and gi, yeah. I'm a, I'm a blue belt on a Fabiano. Uh, Eha, what, yeah, yeah. What, what, how long you think if I get back into it, how long you think it uh, take for me to get a black belt so I can start selling DVDs? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why you, man? You said people making millions of dollars selling selling DVDs. You want me to go get you Blu-rays? He's he's talking about online masterminds, classes, classes, yeah, yeah, yeah. streaming. How, how long it gonna take me to get a black belt? You think? 
a oh, black belt. I think I think he can get a black belt quick. Him? Yeah. Because I because I because he fought. He understands yeah, a lot like, about fighting. Just get one. At no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. No, I don't go no, from you. Don't on. go for blue belt. It's like Mighty Mouse is at a brown belt. He's no. winning he's every competing, competition. But he's competing. Yeah, but he yeah. should be a black belt. Work. No, I haven't been competing. I haven't been competing. I got. I got. But he haven't been competing. Hold on. One at a time, you two. Yeah. Would you, both of you relax? But he's getting better. He's competing. But Mighty now, Mouse is black belt level. Now he's going to get his black belt. But grappling. dude, he went to a brown belt competition, walks in, mops up everybody. Yeah, but now that's here, a black belt. Like, look, the jiu jitsu world is like that. So yeah. you, you, you get white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, right? The black belt is not here. The black belt, you got to go down right here and go up, and the black belt is right here. That's the difference from a brown belt oh, to wow. a black belt. Yeah. Like, because it was the same thing yeah. when I... I when feel I, you. I feel when, you. When I got the black, when I, I was a brown belt, it was second time, second place in the words, and I was winning everything, but words I lost twice on the finals. And then when I got my black belt to the end of 2007, the first year I was a black belt. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know how to compare. It's just like... It's just like those rookie guys come from the NFL. Mm -hmm. So we all there. We've been working for three, four years in the league. Team is doing good. And this guy just came. Like they smashed the guy. Like whenever I that first year as a black belt <laughs> was rough. It was rough. It was just, I, I could I won a couple competition, but just small ones. Like every important one. I was doing very good, but not enough. You know, those guys were just too smart. They too too much experience. That's the thing. When you get the black belt, let's say if you Nick Rod division, whatever, mm -hmm. you just got there, you go to a tournament, you might face that guy the first time, yeah. the first fight. Yeah. So this guy's been there already. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I got in the UFC. Yes. But he's for sure You want not a two blue fights. Belt. You want three fights in the UFC. You're going to fight with the big dogs eventually. Yeah. Well, well, people that I've rolled with said that I'm I'm more like a purple belt level. Yeah, I'm you're not, not a blue because I because I never tested higher than a than a blue yeah. belt. But you should, yeah. yeah. I I for me, but I like just, if you want to test, I like it. You know, I like it. It ain't. It's very personal. One guy, freaking dumb, no athletic. That guy's gonna take forever to get a black belt. Mm -hmm. But the guy that knows what he's doing, he wrestle a little bit. He he's more athletic. He get good cardio. He he yeah. He 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 listen, he get this guy's gonna get the the, yeah. the belt quicker, you know. I know one guy, he told me he got a black belt in five years. Anderson oh. gonna call this. He yeah. said he trained three times a day though. Yeah, that's it. That was yeah. me, yeah. Three times a day. He used to train three, three times a day. I mean, look at BJ Penn. He got yeah. his black belt in like two, three years, I think. Bro, we we were so yeah. Yeah. BJ Penn was super quick, Victor Shaolin. A couple guys were like three to four years. Yeah. In Brazil, I was in Rio, right? I grew up, born and raised in Rio. When I was 1920, we moved to Sao Paulo. I moved to Sao Paulo. I left everything just to train because the train in Sao Paulo was was a little bit more organized. That's the difference. Rio was a lot of party, crazy, bitchy. Like Sao Paulo was was Sao Paulo more as a city. Like if we say like California was kind of like Rio, maybe Florida, Rio, and New York was Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like that, a city. And then when we, when I went to Sao Paulo, we we, we start professional team Ato Jiu Jitsu. We start training super hard, and we were training three times a day, bro. And then the team started getting like that. And that was that year. I moved there in 2007. When I got my black belt, I moved there. 2008 was so freaking hard. I was winning. I was not winning. I was out of home. That was my first time living by myself with a bunch of dudes, one bedroom apartment, like. Disgusting, like very bad. And we're training three times a day, every day. 2009, we started getting famous because we started, getting, we started winning all the tournaments and people would start coming to train. And we trained three times a day, like maniacs, crazy, insane. I remember a lot of guys, good guys, they, a couple guys that here in America, they, they have a jiu-jitsu academy. A lot of guys, I'm not going to say the names, but... Those guys used to come by bus, or most of the guys get the bus from Rio, getting in Sao Paulo in the morning, and we had the first training at 9, 30, 10. These guys training at 10, but we're so competitive that we look at each other, you go first, then I go, then we go, and we're training, we're smashing the guy. And then at 3 o'clock, we're training again, and then we try to kill the guy again. At night, 
Um, so many guys, they already have a, a gym here. They quit before they train at night on Monday. They quit on the first day <laughs> because the training was so, too ins tough, huh? so yeah. insane, so hard that we train, train. The second one, they say, oh, I'm done. You guys crazy. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it, it, I feel like it's another level. And I, and I don't mean like you should just get your black belt. I just meant like you could go test for a higher belt, like a purple yeah. belt. Or, yeah, or I, probably have, I, yeah. I probably have to train for, for the a comment couple of section get comes back. and yeah. kills me yeah, I or get killed yeah. by YouTube. <laughs> you know? But your, your, your um, striking is so good I, I wouldn't even i wouldn't even guess that you was a black belt because your striking is so good but i fell in love with the same love that i have to jiu-jitsu i fell in love with the striking i was i was watching a lot of like demi meyer fabricio verdun all these guys that made the transition world champions that made the transition and i just don't want to depend on a takedown i don't want to depend on the jiu-jitsu and then i start when i start training i won the world's jiu-jitsu tournament here in california and then Pat from Ruka, he sponsored me. And I went to Ruka to get to get a couple of clothes to talk to Pat. And Vitor Balfour was there, 2011. And then I was just training every morning. We trained so hard. I competed. I won that tournament. A couple of guys who won too, we were there. And Vitor, and I like I like to train. And Vitor was there. Oh, you guys want to train us? And the guys that were all tired say, yeah, I want to train. Let, let, let's see, you know, UFC guy, like champion. <laughs> and then we start training and we train him. And he had a, a good cardio, but I was kind of catching him. He was, and then the trainer was very friendly. Okay, let's start here. And then I said, How you do? What you do? And then he was asking a lot. And then, at, but I, when I won the words, I was already, I already thinking, Okay, now I'm going to freaking do MMA. That was my goal. And then Victoria, oh, yeah, I need a guy to train Jiu Jitsu. Like, you should come with me. And then I said, Yes. Where are you staying? He said, oh, I'm in Vegas. I trained with Vito, I won the awards on Sunday. I met Vito on Tuesday at Ruka. Saturday I was with Vito in Vegas and we start his camp and start training. And that mentality that I was putting there, I said, bro, if I'm really doing this, especially there in Vegas, when I went there to train with him, Monday I did MHU training. So I got a freaking mouthpiece I never had. I put gloves and I went to the amateur session. I was I trained Vito in the morning, helping him with the jiu-jitsu at night. He was doing all the training. So I went that extreme couture to amateur session. And those guys were so bad. They were just mm -hmm. submitting everybody, taking down. And the and the, the professor said, No, come tomorrow for the pro training. You 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 cannot come to the amateur. Those no, we come to the pro training. And I thought, I don't know what I thought. I thought it was gonna be fun, it's gonna be okay. Next day when I got an extreme go to Tuesday morning for this point. Oh my God. This was your first time sparring? My first time uh. sparring. I didn't know anything. Mm. I just knew wrestling, a little bit of wrestling, Jiu Jitsu. No hand, nothing. Zero. I was punching like that. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. And I got Jay Hero beat the crap out of me. Michael Chandler, he was already in the Bellator uh, tournament. Uh, who else beat me? Martin Campion. I, I remember every guy's name. All, most of the guys UFC or Bellator. Jay Hero, Michael Chandler, UFC, uh, Bellator, Martin Gabberman on the UFC, Tyson Griffin in the UFC, Evan Dunham in the UFC, and maybe like one or two more. I did five or six rounds. Nose bleeding so bad. I'm, I was I, a week before I was Jiu Jitsu World Champion. Crazy cardio, always working super hard. I got there three point session. I was like, oh my god, like what happened to my cardio? It's like different. That. It's Unreal. different. Like that. It's a different and cardio. Nose bleeding. And then I, at that moment, there was two things that I realized. I realized that I really want to do that shit. I say, okay, I'm, I'm, that's what I want to do. I don't want to do gi no more. I did everything. I was jiu-jitsu world champion with the gi, no gi, Brazilian national. So many times, I, I'm, I'm going to do MMA. And that was the that was that's what I decided to do at that moment. And another thing that I decided right away, I would say, I'm never, I'm not going to depend only on jiu-jitsu for this thing. I need to learn the boxing, wow. striking. That was it. Like, because I couldn't do anything. Like, a couple of these guys, like Jay Hero, it took me, like, just on a wrestling session, the grappling session, I was taking him down. But then on the MMA sessions, it took me, like, eight months to take this guy down. Chandler... Chandler was able to kind of get on the scramble. Or the other guys, I was able to get on the scramble and maybe get on top and get a submission. But when the guy was a real wrestler, it was so hard for me because I couldn't shield. And I, I was learning too. Yeah. 
But then I decided I need, if I'm really doing that and I am really doing that, <laughs> I got to get better on my strike. Who's your first uh, striking coach? Gil Melendez. He's still coaching a lot of, he do a lot of boxing guys. He's a, in uh, Vegas? Max in Vegas. So I was training him the whole year. Mm. And then he pulled me. I remember, and I was doing, I was training crazy because I used to, like I said, I used to train grappling three times a day in Brazil. Mm. When I started training with Vitor, so Vitor hired me to be his coach. So I was getting there early. I was getting the drills with Victor. And sometimes he's going to do a couple of trainings. So I was sometimes I was cornering him to the session. And then when his session was done, I said, well, now I'm going to do my training. So I was doing the training. I was doing privates with the boxing coach. And I was doing the other trainings. Every training that they have in Extreme Couture, I was there all day and I was training, training. Were you speaking English at this time? Ooh, very, very little. Like, How long were, were you with Vitor? I was with Vitor 2011 until 2014 or 15. Yeah. So then I start, and I was standing up with Vitor. Though my first loss when when Vitor moved out of the Black City, but then I, so I was here in Vegas for a year. Then we moved to Florida. Then we're back in Brazil for a little bit. Florida, Brazil, and then we moved to Florida. And then I was with Vitor for a long time, but then he decided to do his own camp, like just like the boxer. He want to hire everything, do his own thing. And then I, I want to go with him, but then I was broke. Bro. I just moved to America with my family. My wife, I had my first kid. My wife was pregnant. And then he said, no, but we got to hire. I said, no, <laughs> I'm going to stay at the Black Zealand. Just give my 10% and I have all the training. So and that that's why we kind of like, he, he did his own thing. We're still friends. He was still he understood, close. Huh? He understood. But yeah, you know, do your thing. Like, And then I was kind of, that's when I was doing my thing. But I was... I cornered Victor that first fight that that was that camp that that first when I started training he fought Yoshihiro Yakiyama then he fought Anthony Johnson then he fought uh, I think it was John Jones after that and then he fought Dan Henderson Michael Bisping Luke Rockhold Dan Henderson again so I cornered him like seven times wow. that was, Man, that's the, a li that's a lineup he um he I thought he broke John Jones arm in that fight he did too. he popped I had the photo like after the that was my first interaction with John Jones I came in here and said bro he was with with his arm was wrapped and I said can I take a picture with you but but I don't know my English was bad too and then I was I was helping Vito with his jiu-jitsu. They said, "Ah, oh, fuck that, though." And I was taking him, <laughs> but and that and he ended up taking a picture. And bro, he, he has nothing to do with that. But John Jones is crazy, bro. He's crazy. We were in Brazil, and I was, <laughs> I was cornering Vitor, and uh, my English was so bad, and Nogueira was there, and then he came. Oh, you think you just got the trainer Vitor? And I, and I like my English so bad. I say, yeah, why don't you train with me now? And then I like. John Jones? Yeah. And I say, yeah, let's do it. And then, but he was really like trying to, he was serious. He was serious huh? But I, I didn't understand it. it was, uh, and then Nogueira came and then Nogueira, what are you saying? And they say, hey, I want to train with you too, you too, Nogueira. And then he started getting after Nogueira. You know, get oh, you want to grapple? Let's go right now. These guys start grappling on the floor. I, uh, uh, bro, that shit was crazy. No, Gary started taking his watch off, taking his shit off. Which Nagara? The big Nagara or the little Nagara? Big knock. Big knock, yeah. No, Gary, they start rolling on the floor. No, Gary catching a couple times, but he was just like, that was good, but let's go again. Like, those guys were grappling on Where? the floor. At a fight? In Brazil. At, at a, at at a, a UFC thing. <laughs> but on like, on Thursday, like. So the John Jones just tells floor. Noguera, let's go right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Noguera says, let's He's go. He's that jiu-jitsu work, like, kind of talking a little he bit. He was talking shit? And then... He was probably Noguera, high. Yeah, let's go, bro. They show grappling like crazy. Who won? On the floor. Noguera catching, like, maybe two or three times, but John Jones put him in the bad position a couple of times, too, so it was, was a good grappling. John Jones was a good wrestler, yeah, yeah. strong... Yeah, crazy. Why would bro. he do this just to try to get in the other? Oh, camp's he does head? that with everybody. People say, not nowadays I don't know, but back in the days they used to do that with everybody. Oh, you're good wrestle, let's wrestle. Oh, you're good at jujitsu, let's go. Wow, yeah. John Jones is a different breed. It's yeah. a lot of ego in mixed martial uh, or in martial arts, bro. It, yeah. You you wouldn't believe the ego that that comes with that sport. No, with I can different imagine. with the different um, martial arts. So so many times like those kung fu guys. They have such egos, then their students have egos too. Like yeah. Kung Fu people that come to me, hey, maybe you know my my master. I'm like, what's his <laughs> I'm sure I don't I said I'm sure I don't know your master. Okay, who's your master? What's his name? 
<laughs> they always want to show me their mess and they think I know him. Like, no, I ain't never heard of him. Yeah, you know him. It's just a big ego that comes with martial arts. So I, I see people like challenging people all the time. Whenever I whenever I'm out here and I'm I'm asked like Nicky Rod when he asked to roll me, I'm like, bro, I, I get trained by Gilbert Burns, dog. And then I got submitted. He's like, I'm gonna have to talk to Gilbert. I just tell everybody you trained. Did you see me. the Did you see the picture? Uh, Nicky Rod teabag. I, I trained so with, with yeah. Nick. He he said good things about me. Yeah, I, I think in the UFC, I don't know. Yeah. They ask, oh, what he was talks the, really highly of you. What was the best? MMA fighter that like they trained and say, oh Gilbert, but uh, yeah. but I'm a jujitsu guy, you know, they yeah. became MMA fighter. But I remember when I trained with him, I was that BMF belt when uh Jorge fought Nate Diaz. Yeah. I was there, I was cornering Luke, if I'm not wrong. Luke Rocco? I was Vicente, Vicente uh -uh, Luke. I was cornering uh -huh. Luke there. And then we went all to train in Hansel's and I don't know, Thursday and Friday, so much people there. I was rolling with everybody, and then I first time that I rolled with Nick. And then I rode so many guys. And then when I was training with Nick, they said, oh, now it's going to be back in specific. Like, the guy shot us on the turtle, so I shot on bottom. That freaking guy gave me a, a cross face, bro. He almost rolled my neck. When he, it's so he, big. I tapped, and I was so mad. And then I said, okay, it's going to be my turn. So and then we did. We rode uh and then when he's time, bro, I jump on his neck with everything. Like, wow. <laughs> but hey, uh, he going to remember it, but I jump with everything. Yeah. Like, boom, I got his neck and then he tapped. Mm. And then they, and then the training got even crazy because then then both Eagle were there. So I was going, he was going, change partner. No, let's go again. Yeah, let's go again. But we kept going. Like, everybody, it got to one point that everybody stopped to see me and him training. <laughs> and we always scramble like crazy in one top. One guy on top of the guy on bottom, we're going crazy. He's twice your size too. He's big. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but that's kind of like a couple of years ago. He wasn't as good as uh, he is right uh, now. Okay. He was yeah. He was a purple belt coming no, up. I've been training for four yeah. or five years. He was, yeah, mm -hmm. he was, that was maybe two years, yeah. two, three years ago. You see but, what, he, what he's he's explaining? I can't do that. Why? Man, I I would lose my temper. It would turn to a fight. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I don't see how Why you do it. No, no it's, if I'm training with somebody and we doing stuff like that, positions, and they go and they crank my neck. I oh, just crank his neck too. No, no. I, <laughs> it, it would turn to a fight. For, it's no, for me, it's very simple. No. Simple. Oh, you're going to that level? Okay. Yeah. No problem. I, I'd be like, oh, you're going to do that? Let's fight. No, I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I say, oh. No, I wouldn't say it. It no, would turn to a fight. Nikki's very respectful. He, yeah, he's a nice yeah. guy. But he's me talking to myself. Oh, it's gonna be like that. Okay. See, that's I why I respect. Know. Thank you. That's yeah. why I respect you because I don't have that. This I don't have that. Because one of the nicest guys in the world. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm one of the nicest guys in the world too. But for for me, if I'm training with somebody and I call it take, taking liberties. Yes. That's what I call it. I'm like, he's gonna take liberties. He's gonna try to hurt me. I think I think crazy in my mind. Like it's turned to a fight. I pick him up and slam him. And I punch him. Antonio McKee. He used to always get mad at me because he would see the tail end of it. When I'm training with people, he's always uh, get mad at me at his gym because like people will go crazy on me in the gym and it turned to a fight. I pick him up and I slam him, then I'm punching him and stuff. And he just in see a grappler, me. You know, grappler. It, it, yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever. If they if they go crazy on me, it turned to a fight. No, and then he just see me fighting him and he be like, "Man, what are you doing? Why are you kicking people's ass in my gym?" I'm like, "Well, you you wasn't seeing this guy was trying to break my arm. He trying to choke me. And, but, you know, I just can't do it." I don't know if it's a discipline, but it's on me. Okay, I was going to be like that. Like, when I, I was going to Miami, I live in Boca Raton. It's like an hour away, just like maybe to drive here to, to LA. And a lot of boxers, they're good boxers, like very good boxers. I got to go with that because these guys are boxers. I got to go there, get some rounds with these guys. But these guys are so, these guys are fast and good and all weight. And I went there, so I trained with the guy, doing pads, doing 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 meets with the guy, doing bag, and started doing class. And I like the Cuban dude. And they said, "I'll come Saturday to sparring." And I said, well, "Sure, these guys are going crazy. I might, I'm gonna have fights. Somewhere. I don't want to. No, no, come. They're going hard, but not. They're gonna be respectful." And then, bro, when I was there to spar, oh my god, like, but that's when you. <laughs> You get aware to the fight. That's why I like it. If the guys really want to take my head off, coming crazy, for me, I'm just getting the tools to learn how to do that in the fight if the same thing happened in the fight. So I don't take it bad, but I say, oh, you're going to come like that? Okay. You I'm don't gonna... take it personal? No, I'm going to keep my hands up. I'm going to keep learning. But if I see a little opening, I'm going <laughs> to throw it everything too. So it's kind of, it's the game. It's just like a race. Yeah. I don't know. If you want to go that fast, okay, we go that fast. It's just like 
you yeah, really want to get discipline. Yeah, we really want to get to this point. We don't have to, but if you really want, yeah, we can go. Let's see if you're gonna like it. Have you ever knocked somebody out and smile? Yeah, that day, that first day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy we saw, and then we move in. Those guys are they they box boxing. So these guys, so they move different. They they good, bro. Good footwork, good head movement. If you really show that you want to take the head, you're not you're not gonna land anything. So you still gotta move, but be tight. And this guy was okay. He came in, and then he broke. Give me a good. He was southpaw and give me a left straight so hard. Boom. And he still throw another combo. That one it was clean. Second one kind of block it. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> all right, okay. And then, and that's me trying to control the surrounding, okay. Okay, it's going to be hard. No problem. We, we can fight. And then I started moving with this guy. And I remember throw, and the coach started saying, throw the right hand on the body. So I walking to your left. And I was walking to your left, throw on the body. And boom. Round was over three, four minutes, and they went to the guy and they said, I want you to throw two right hands on the body. Walk, right hand on the body, move, 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 right hand on the body again. And then you're gonna go down and you're gonna overhand right hand, not gonna see it coming. I said, okay. And I can't listen. Then I say, You sure? I said, Yeah, let's go. Same thing, bro. Body, body, third one, overhand, clean. The guy was out. <laughs> A boxer with the headgear, but he just like, he dictate that. Then don't complain. But I spar with the other guys too. The fifty fivers, forty. Those are the best guys to spar in. The forty fives and fifty fivers. Those guys that they fight one forty four, one forty three. Bro, these guys are so fast, so good, and they don't want to throw hard because they don't want me to throw hard too. But we still spar. We we go good. Nothing too crazy. But these are the best guys to spar because. They're going to give me the speed. They're going to give me what I need. I need those eyes. I need, oh, shit. I need to see the punch coming, move. Those are, that's why sometimes I take that trip to go to Miami, but I know it might be a, a crazy one there that I need to get. One that, round is going to be super hard. That's why his striking is so good because of his mindset. And back in my day, like I'm a dinosaur now, but, um, you know, when I was fighting, if a guy was really good at jujitsu, they kind of like relied on the jujitsu a lot. You know, but he, he's going and he's actually sparring with real boxers, mm -hmm. and and he's and he has a good mindset about it. I he's was, a monster. Yeah, I was wondering why your striking was so so good for I, a jujitsu guy. No, but I go there spar with these guys. Oh my, like, and 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 that's the thing. Like, I have the option to go and fight these guys. Like, take the guy down, but I want to get better. So you gotta go through this shit. You know, like. Yeah. I take, I, love it, it. I, I take it personal too much. But <laughs> why? I, yeah. But why you think? I have a bad temper. Why you think you have a bad temper? I, it has to. It has to spawn from my, child, my, my childhood. It has to. I've always have. I've always had. You that. have brothers? Yeah, I got. They I got. on you. Well, my older brother, he's like six years older than me. But by the time I was like, what, shit, eight, ten years old, I was bigger and, and tougher than him. He couldn't. He couldn't fuck with me. By the time I was eighteen, I grew up fighting. And my and my my older brother, I, I he, I was so so much stronger and better fighting him. I felt bad. I never I never kicked his ass. One time we got into a a, a, a like a like a you know argument and stuff, and I felt so bad. I remember just punching him in his chest. And he's he's older than me, right? But my cousins and stuff, I grew up fighting them and fighting in the street. Like um the neighborhood where, where we moved to, where my where we moved into this neighborhood. Um, Cause my grandmother had California, cancer, right? and in Memphis, I'm from Memphis, oh, Memphis. Okay. and uh, we moved to this new neighborhood. And um, these guys there, they was weak. They was weak, and it was a projects. You know what a projects? Okay, yeah. kind of like a yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They lived, Dallas, yeah. yeah, yeah. They was right down the street from us. We all went to the same school, and they used to bully the kids in my neighborhood, and I and I hated bullies. And they used to just pick on them, and and I was like, man, fuck that. This is my my neighborhood. Let's stand up. So I used to have to fight all those project kids. So I just grew up fighting right but i had the worst i'm the nice guy but i have the worst temper so when i'm sparring and stuff right if somebody hit me with something clean hit me hard like i feel like they try to knock me out you go back like those guys trying to bully you oh, you think it's oh, kind of yeah. like that a little bit oh man you have no idea how many guys i i knocked out in the gym for but i let them go first i know but because of that you think because that temper of growing up those guys trying to bully you and you're like no i'm not gonna let you bully me yeah yeah man. but no nobody really tried to bully me one time i remember i got beat up by some men that was that was like older than me they was kind of like bullying me but 
other than that, no one really tried to bully me. But they, but they bullied my cousin and my little brother and, you and my like friends. That. I don't like that. I don't like bullies. So yeah. now, bully means something different now. When yeah. I was a kid, bully mean they yeah. was kicking. They was kicking their ass. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, back in the day, sure. now yeah. bully you make yeah. fun of somebody's shoes. Yeah. If I make fun of your hair, yeah. I'm a bully. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like people call me a bully for making fun yeah. of titties on the Ultimate Fighter. I'm like that's <laughs> that not was, a bully. That was bullying. <laughs> yeah, you know that so. was bullying. No, how that was, was that bullying? On, live, on national TV, the most watched Ultimate Fighter show of all time. You calling this guy titties because he's overshaped? Okay, overweight. number one. Uh, number one. You know what I mean? Hey, Come on, hey, hey, hey. You, he, he, that's funny. You know, yeah, it's like, funny. No, it's funny. Out. It's funny, like, but he, he goes by. No, no. We all know Rampage. You would have destroyed the guy. No, 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 no. Listen, you got to hear me out now. Number glasses on. Hear me. Hear, no, hear me out. Number one, he started it. He started. He came. He came. He came at me first. And number two, he was bigger than me. He was a heavyweight. I wasn't a heavyweight then. So who was really bullying? It's just, it's not my fault that I can I can uh, you know I grew you can't up. Can't touch your nerve that the guy right, can't. Right. Yeah. It's not my fault that I can, that I, I can make fun of people better because I grew up poor and I and I grew up really ugly. So people had a lot of ammo on me. So I had to learn how to talk shit. Bro, you look yeah. like Michael B. Jordan. Not not as a kid. I did. About? I don't look like Michael and B. Jordan right now. And you gotta. And you gotta pretend that that shit doesn't hurt you, right? Right. right. You gotta if, come right if back. If they see that that she hurt you, they it's gonna be done. worse. Yeah. yeah. Gilbert, I want to know as we wrap up this podcast. You fought Masvidal, Usman, Kamzat, Chamav. You fought all the all all the best guys in your division. You never run from a fight. Out of those three guys that I just mentioned, who who is your toughest opponent? Who do you think was the best fighter you fought out of those three guys? Shit. Uh, I fought. Who you said there? Masvidal, <laughs> Masvidal, Uzma, Hamza. Wonder Boy was freaking tough. I yeah. gotta take this guy Wonder down. Wonder Boy was crazy. Uh, yeah, the guy was fast. Like fast. Yeah, yeah, he's fast. Faster than those like, guys. Fast, and because whenever you come, but that, that, that I was lucky that I was training this guy because those guys are so fast. But the thing with him was the full work. Whenever I was getting the distance, okay, oh, he's there. Whenever I was just, you know, like just fan two jabs and then throw a right hand. But, but when I did this, the guy was so far already. And if I commit one more, he came in, he was out again. Like, oh my God. And I remember took him down, did good, control him very was easier than I thought. And then the guy threw me a spinning kick out of nowhere, bro. And my my left leg, I lost my left leg for a little bit. My knee went down. Like, oh my God. And I remember I, I closed everything and I was expecting him coming like and throwing bombs on me. When I cover up, I don't know. I think he was trying to get a better shot. He was trying to me to swing, he step back and throw the game. But whenever I close, he just touched me. And then I was just like, oh, fuck that. And then I went forward. But you submit him? No. No, he had no. never been submitted to this weekend. He would be submitted. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was a good fight, but what a boy I think was very good. Uh another guy, Damian Maya was like a legend for me. Uh -huh. It was very hard for me for me fight the guy that I kind of like mm -hmm. respected so much. The title of the fight mentally was a hard fight because it was just a former champion, you know. Uh, yeah, all, all these all these fights are a challenge, you know. Yeah. On a different on a different way, you know. But we but, saw the respect for Masvidal. Yeah. Did that one was that one different for you? Uh, to be honest, Masvidal that was very slick because I hit it hard a couple of times, and it, that was another one that was doing a lot of boxing with these guys. Mm -hmm. And then when I was hitting him, I was just like. I'm, I, you can feel that you're touching that guy, but he's still there. The, I think Masvidal, what's the best way to say? He was very slick. He was hurt a couple of times. If it was another guy, I might try to get a finish, but with him, he was always danger. You know, he was always there. I hit him hard, but he's there. And I see he kind of wants to throw a left hook. I said, this guy is slick. Like, he, he's a good guy. Like, my, that was very good. Hamza, strong, hungry. Kamar, very smart fighter, too. Strong. All these guys are different challenges. You know? yeah. all, all these guys are super tough. When, when, uh, and I only got a, I got like one more question and I want to wrap it up here. When, uh, when Usman stepped up to fight, right? Obviously, yeah. he stepped up last minute. Yeah. We saw you kind of like release the video, right? In yeah. the gym. Were you his training partner getting ready for the fight? He was training, like, because uh, who was he? He was fighting Costa, right? Paulo Costa. Mm -hmm. The thing with Costa happened, I think, Tuesday night, maybe Tuesday, and people release, oh, he's not fighting, he's out of the fight. And then Wednesday morning, Kamar is doing sparring. Wednesday is a wrestling day. And this guy's doing a sparring session with two guys, two tough guys, and then I'm like, is this what I think? And those guys start laughing and say, yeah, maybe. They say, oh, maybe he'll see how he does. 
I don't even ask. I say, is that? Yeah. I say, yeah. And then I just made a video. Oh, I think this guy got a new opponent. And I just did like it went viral. And then she went crazy. Yeah. And uh, he ended up got a fight, you know. And he showed up, bro. Because when I think so, that was my question. When you get to those, when you get to the level, the guy was pound for pound, number one, make a lot of money. And then they offer you a fight like that. He sometimes he, let me see if the and he came from two losses. He's gonna get this fight. You know, say, you know what? Let me see if he's getting that fight just to get this money and an excuse because if I lose, it was in the one week notice. But a freaking guy showed up, you know, and I think if it was a little bit more, maybe two more rounds there, he could get it done. But was I think that was the thing that he, that, that was a catch to, like he went up in the vision and was only three rounds. That guy, he he's a slow starter, you know, he's, he, how many times he did five rounds, yeah. so... I lost the first one, start coming back slowly on the second one. I think he lost the second one. Third one, he won, but it's over, bro. It's only three rounds, yeah. you know? So, but I think if he had a full camp, uh, Usman would have sure. won. Yeah. That's why he started talking this week. He wants a rematch. Yeah. This is a rematch. you waiting anyways. Yeah. yeah, I think. And another thing, too, this guy has a knee messed up, you know, like. Whenever, Usman's knee? Yeah, very bad. Like, he does team himself. He does a lot of control. He, the guy... He used to wrestle a lot, the whole camp, and then he was getting back. It was just like me, but I was me with the jiu-jitsu and boxing. Mm -hmm. He was the wrestling and striking. And uh, he, he got him a long way, but then lately, those last couple of years, the knee wasn't as good yeah. to yeah. keep wrestling like the way he likes, you know? Yeah, yeah it's, 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 I think it's definitely, you got to know your body, too, as you get older. The last thing I got for you, Gilbert, besides I'm very thankful that you came on here, all joking aside, you're a legend in the sport, and everybody knows that you're a, a world champion caliber fighter. You're one of the best in the division. Who has the best jujitsu in the UFC right now? Besides yourself. Charles Oliveira has a great jujitsu and he holds all the records, you know. I think Charles Oliveira. He's another, he's another guy there with it. Oh, uh, they said, I, I never saw as much, but I heard Tom Aspinall has a great jujitsu. Really? That's what I heard. The new champ. Yeah, and... Uh, He's another guy there. He just called out John Jones. Two or five, not much. It'll wait. You got Brandon Wally with a good jiu-jitsu too. You will to wait. Oliveira, 45 is Brian Ortega too. Good yeah. jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Algerman Sterling at 135, good jiu-jitsu. Pantoja at 125. But yeah, the best jiu-jitsu, gotta say Charles Oliveira. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, Tom just called. I think he called out John Jones or something on the yeah, tweet, yeah, and John yeah. Jones tweeted him, and he says, "Okay, thanks, John." <laughs> you're right. You're yeah, right. you're right, John. You see that? No, no. Yeah, because the interim belt versus the heavyweight belt, oh, the whole thing. Oh. So, Gilbert, I appreciate you coming on. I mean, it's it's an amazing thing to watch you in real time. I got to watch you do the Woodley fight and watch you through these last couple of fights, and you're you're unbelievable. I think one thing that everybody loves about you is your dog. You know, everybody else mm -hmm. would have given up on that Bilal fight. Hopefully, he gets that fight. He's probably next in line. We'll see what the UFC does, but. You're a dog, and to have the heart you have, and I think that's why your fan base and everybody loves you in the MMA community is because they know that you care and you put on a good show, and that, that's something you always talk about, putting on a good show. Yeah, so I, I, I couldn't be more honored to have you here. Make sure you guys let us know in the comments who do you want to see next. He's got a big fight coming up, 299, UFC 299. It's going to be fantastic. UFC 300 is going to be one for the books. We're coming close to both of those, and uh, we can't wait to see you fully healthy in there just to decapitate yes. someone's head. That's the goal, yes. Would, would you have rather fought on UFC 300 than 299? 299 is at home, you know. Oh, yeah. he's, he's in Miami, South Florida, March 9. get a good, good three months to get him. He's going to be good in March. I oh, like okay. it. I'll, 300 will be historical, but it's going to be so many guys. Let, let, yeah. let me be one of the guys there. It's oh, going to okay. be a good well, one, yeah. 299. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you for coming with us, bro. Sure. I appreciate it, man. My it was, pleasure, it was, it was fun, man. Amazing, yeah, Gilbert. Thank you, brother. Thank you guys, yeah. All That's right. it. Make sure you guys check us out. Leave a comment. Make sure you guys follow us on uh, the podcast page on Instagram, Jackson Podcast, and join the Discord for all the giveaways. I'm Bear to GDO, the one and only Gilbert Burns and Rampage Jackson.